Alrighty, guys, here we are live for the PDOX live stream. Looks like I clicked the button about one minute early here, but um, I will be uh, recording this and sending it to anybody uh, who attended who wants to replay, or I'm sure a lot of people who don't attend live, um, you know, will be hopping on or asking for the replay. And I also post this on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, but what I want to get into is exactly what it said in the highlight or in the title of the video here. And that is going over the three most effective um, aspects within organic outreach on Facebook that really lead to monetization in your business. Um, and regardless, we'll go over a couple different models. What I really want to share here today, and I'm just going to start with this little document here and the three steps that we're talking about here are in bold so you'll see the sniper targeting approach the cold dm framework and then also a facebook group and funnel a facebook group funnel and monetization is really what i'm going to cover um there's a little bit here as you can see in terms of explanations and frameworks on the document but a lot more examples and stuff i'm going to screen share because i want to show you this in actual application, implementation, the different way I use this, the different ways my setting team uses this for effective organic outreach. Um, you know, one of my areas of expertise, as you guys know, and something I've been doing for five years now is Facebook organic. Uh, that's how I got my start. And I still do it in all of our businesses, along with the other things we do. You know, we do a lot of paid advertising. We do cold email. We do mutually beneficial partnership, referral based programs for client acquisition. Um, but organic is still a big part of it. And um, it, I always feel like, and you guys hear me say this over and over, if I'm not currently and actively still doing it, I probably should stop teaching it because I've noticed there's been a lot of trends and a lot of things that have evolved, a lot of things that have died. Um, and there's a lot of different nuances and intricacies to the outreach. But let's get right into it just for time's sake. And guys, I will chime in and check in on the live stream occasionally on my phone here. Um, because I'm screen sharing and going to be teaching a lesson, it's going to be hard to see who's watching or if anyone's watching and the engagement. So if you have any questions, anything you want me to go over clear or anything I say like, hey, guys, if you want this, just let me know. Just comment below if I'm talking about a resource or an asset or an example or a specific link I'm covering. Um, I'll try to include as much as I can and add it into this document for you guys. Um, but again, just kind of comment and let me know if um, you want me to cover, you have any questions. So I'm just gonna open my phone so I can see the chat here and what's going on. And it looks like, I gotta mute that. It looks like we only have one person actively watching right now. Um, but again, just chime in uh, that you're watching live and any questions and comments, and I will circle back to that um, and just touch base here a couple times throughout the live stream. So the sniper targeting approach. Now, what I mean by that just very clearly is sniper targeting is very direct on you're not just connecting with somebody who might be a um, potential prospect. Like what I was first taught in one of the programs that um, myself and my business partner paid over $15,000 four years ago is you send out 50 to 100 friend requests a day. You start creating posts and anybody that engages, even if they don't comment, they like you send a friend request and you start a conversation. Now you can do that, but I've come to find that especially likes is not real warm engagement that's not much intent i want somebody to actually you know i want some um concrete kind of evidence for lack of a better phrase and i'll go over the parameters and the criteria um, to show that this person is actually my ideal audience so i'm going to show you different ways where i find these people right so that's the first aspect where do i find these people and number one is knowing your niche in your industry and your ideal target audience right the first mistake any of you guys can make and i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this but if you think your products or your services can help everybody um you're going to have a big time because if you're talking to everybody with your marketing and your outreach, you're really speaking to nobody. You need to know how to dial into a certain audience so you can assess um, problems. You can address situations. You can recommend and suggest solutions, valuable posts, um, you know, and, and the things we're going to talk about here. So now what I like to do first is I like to find leads without having to do anything, right? What if we can find leads without having to create any posts, without having to go search through groups, you know, and there might be a little of that in what I'm showing, but I'm going to show you very direct um, ways to do this. So one is I always like to utilize other people's audiences and time and money, whether that's a uh, competitor's ads, whether that's competitor, colleague, competition. I don't always mean competitor, meaning you offer the direct services. I just mean 
other individuals that are targeting the same audience. You might be going for just digital business owners. You might be going for coaches. You might be going for a combination of coach consultant agency. You might be going more service-based industries, roofing, plumbing, electrician, but knowing your audience first and foremost, and then where to find them. I'm not saying go after necessarily, you can, but I'm not saying necessarily just go after direct competition, um, but that is very, very helpful. And you're gonna see a little of that, but it's also people that are just serving the same audience or same niche, but they may have a totally different set of services um, um, offers solutions and, and that kind of stuff so number one and I'm gonna bring up some examples really quick of some posts um, I jotted some down and just posted some stuff here on my private slack and just like a message with myself so examples of so let's go over number one of using other groups so other groups where our ideal audience hang out, they post a big list of your ideal audience every single week for you to see. And you've probably been a part of some of these. You probably scroll by a lot of these. You've probably never used them to your benefit to get leads and lead gen. So let me click on one of these real quick. Um, and go right into this. So for instance, I'm talking about welcome posts in groups. Oh, did I click on the wrong one? I might have. Um, so let me go back really quick. Sorry, guys. Um, I would rather cover these in the right order. So let me just go back really quickly and exit out my chats here. Let me go back to where I just was. So that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see Dan Organic. Uh, welcome new members. That's what I was looking for. So I was going a, lot of, a little out of order, but we're going to cover quite a few of these. So um, let's go to what I just talked about, right? A welcome post in a specific group. So this is how I utilize this and how I target down um, the people I'm going to add, right? Now, what I talked about, um, you know, what I learned and what a lot of people think with DM outreach is it's a, a volume game and it's a contact sport. And it is to an extent. Um, the more you do, the better results you get. But what if I could show you how to get the results you're getting now by sending 50 to 100 DMs by doing about 15 new requests per day? Um, you know, a fraction of what you're currently doing. And that's what I talk about with the sniper approach. So here in this particular group, the Coaching Jungle, some of you guys watching will be familiar. Some may not be. Obviously, it's a group for um, coaches, right? Now there's about 26,000 members. And what they do each week, this one was from back on August 4th, is welcome everyone who just joined the coaching jungle. Tell us more about yourselves and your business. And then they tag them all. So there's a list here of, I don't know, what's a... Uh 30, 50, 70, I mean, approximately 100 names right here of new people to this group. So that tells me a couple things. Number one, they haven't got a lot of value here and they're not like super loyal to this group, right? They're relatively new to the group. They are new to the group. They're on the welcome post for new members. So they're new, right? So one of my strategies when I'm reaching out to these people and I'll get to the other aspects of it as we get through the rest of the um, you know, steps, what we're gonna cover here today, um, but basically what I do when I come in here is I'm looking to narrow this down. So what I do is I go kind of hover over their name and you see what pops up initially, right? So I see how many mutual friends, I see a little of their background, I can see their profile picture and I can send my friend request or I could click on it and go hover over their profile more. So number one, my first step is what I call stereotyping their profile. I'm looking for certain things for my ideal audience. For instance, for me doing outreach, five mutual friends is actually ideal. I like like somewhere between two and 10 or 15 mutual friends for me with all my connections and how long I've been in the space. Once they have more than say 15 mutual friends, they've probably been in this space for a little while. They probably already bought a couple programs. They might already be working with somebody. They might not be at a spot where they're willing to invest again. I'm not saying I don't still work with and help those people. I definitely do. I'm first talking about my ideal audience. So an indicator for me, I'm looking for people with just a couple to say 15 mutual friends as my ideal outreach. Reach. Um, you know, and again, this group is based on coaches. So if that's one of the groups that we're targeting, this would be a good one for us, right? If we're not targeting these people, this wouldn't be applicable. That's why I'm saying um, just transition everything I'm talking about to, you know, doing this in your niche and industry. Um, and if you need help or any resources about finding and joining these groups, uh, I have a module on that. Happy to send it to you um, if you comment or send me a message or drop a comment wherever you're watching this, Facebook Live, on the re replay, on YouTube, what have you. Um, but anyway, I'm going to kind of hover over their profile. A lot of times I'm going to be a little, you know, for this, I'm going to keep it a little shorter um, so I can get through all of this. But a lot of times I'm going to actually go click and look at it and look at, you know, what their tagline says, right? That tells me a lot. Like, do they even have their tagline primed? Or are they still using the same thing that's dated that everyone was using four years ago, right? I help X do Y, um, you know, without doing big objection, right? Without, you know, and then, um, um, 
however it goes in under 90 days so i help coaches land their first client without having to jump through flaming hoops or give up their firstborn child in under 45 days right however you want to interpret that i obviously made it funny people are usually more serious but that's very dated and sometimes they don't even have a bio right so i can kind of tell how established they are by looking over a couple things but i'm going to go through this list of say 100 names and i'm going to find the 15 or so that are really my ideal audience maybe there's more than that right even better um but i might be able to get my 15 and, and on my metrics and what I'm going to cover before the end of this, but I send about 15 friend requests per day in my organic approach. And that's what my DM setters do. And those are the metrics we track. Sure. Can we do more? Um, yeah. In some instances, do we need to? No, not always. I'm, I'm showing you efficient, effective ways. I recommend if we can put in about two to four hours a day toward our organic, whether you're doing this as an appointment setter, as a business owner, if you can a lot and, and you can do everything I'm going to show you in just two to four hours a day, I do it in two or less and I have a very streamlined. Um, so I would say double that time just to be safe. But most of you guys could do this in less, especially if you're going to follow exactly what I say. Now, this guy with 80 mutual friends, um, and I already see some of the names, like this guy's probably not my ideal audience. If I was going to connect with him, it would probably be for a different objective than prospecting. He may be, might be somebody I'm looking to his expertise because I host live streams as you're watching now. Sometimes I have guests on. So when I'm doing this as a business owner and growing my network, I'm also doing this in a couple capacities. You guys might be doing this very streamlined. It's just looking for ideal people to get booked into calls. Then you would just stick to that. I send out requests um, to, to forge new people in my network and what I call mutually beneficial partners partnerships, as well as new um, kind of entry level or novice level sophistication prospects that are better fit to join my free groups and my programs. And that's what I was saying earlier, guys, of my strategy, usually with new group members in um, somebody else's group like this, when I send a friend request is number one, and I'll talk about this when I get to number two here, I wait about 24 to 48 hours after they accept before I do my first outreach message. Number two, my main objective, I'm already thinking, which leads into step three of what we're going to cover today, the funnel and monetization of the Facebook group. My main objective is to now get this person into my group. And very quickly, again, run through it in this case, add about 15 people here by telling you what I do, you know, by going through the exercise I just talked about. Wait a day or two, send out an outreach message, which I'll get into. Then the main objective in the transition in this one is like my outreach message would be something line, along the lines of, you know, let's say I sent it to uh, Haven here. Hey, Haven. Hey, man. Nice to make your acquaintance. Hey, I see we recently became connected here on Facebook in the last day or two. And rather than remain strangers like tons of people seem to do on this platform, I actually wanted to reach out and get to know you and introduce myself a little. Um, basically, the reason I probably sent you a friend request, uh, Haven, is I'm always just looking to constantly expand my network with other like-minded in individuals, people who are critical thinkers, people who are creators or creative, people who I like to say don't take life too seriously, but at the same time, they're accountable and want to build a better life for themselves. So looking over your profile, it looks like you tick some of them boxes. And I think I saw that you had recently joined the coaching jungle. Hey, man, that's a great group and they drop a lot of value in there. I've been a member for years and you could probably go in there and search and see some of the posts I've dropped. In addition, man, I have my own little Facebook group called the PDOX method where we've worked with about 3000 clients and students and I have all kinds of free stuff in there. I'm probably a little more value than this in this group because it's a little more intimate. I do weekly live streams. I have a free course in the guide section. Here's a link to my group we'd love to have you in there love to see you check it out boom right like there's my whole thing so if you guys just saw what i did i'll go through the strategy and the framework in a little more depth but that's one strategy right there using other people's welcome posts whether they're spending money or time organically, they're driving 100 new members to this group per week. This group is your ideal audience if you're looking for coaches and people are looking to grow coaching and expert businesses, right? So it's ideal. Um, let me go back here really quickly to another example. I'm not going to go to another welcome post. Let's go to the first one I clicked on and let's talk about um, a competition or a colleague's organic stuff. Right. So, guys, uh, Dan Henry, some of you guys will be familiar with him. Uh, you might have saw one of my posts recently where I actually recorded the organic outreach modules for one of his most recent courses he's launching. Um, his team reached out to see people that might be able to do it a little better than them. And uh, they brought them on. Excuse me. Um, to film some of their modules and stuff. So um, a lot of people saw that post and maybe 60 of you commented and asked for that. If you want the modules that I filmed for Dan's course about organic outreach, going to cover some of this stuff, some stuff a little different. I'm happy to send those over if you comment. But this is just an example of somebody creating a post 
Hey, the internet made this guy rich for eating chicken wings. You can claim a piece of the internet money pie too without stuffing your face. Want to learn how? Comment, yada, yada, yada. So this is just telling me very directly, right? He's got a little humor, things that are relevant now, but he's also very directly, if you want to learn how to make money on the internet, comment XYZ below. So now anybody commenting XYZ below is somebody raising their hand, basically saying, hey, Dan, Ray, whoever is seeing my, me raise my hand, right? I'm actually looking to make money online. They're basically raising their hand. So I'm going to do the same thing here, right? Um, this one I can see here has 132 comments, okay? So that's a good engagement. Everybody that commented, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of hover over their profile. I might click on it and go look over their profile. What's their bio? What's their cover photo? What's their main business? Because uh, this doesn't give you as much information as it maybe used to or um, or what have you. Um, but I can see like where they're from. Maybe you're only working with people in certain countries. A lot of times it's smart to restrict certain countries that, you, that kind of are tire kickers and they might waste your time and you're going to see trends. So that's another way you can target by mutual friends, um, you know. So I would go through here. There's 130 something people commenting on this post or maybe Dan replied to everyone. So let's say there's half of that. There's 60, 80 comments of people raising their hands saying, yes, I want interest. I guarantee you probably 15 or more of those fit the profile of who I want to send outreach messages to. And then, I mean, I'm sorry, friend request first. Then again, guys, I mean, if I didn't cover it or I didn't specify, the reason I wait 24 to 48 hours is kind of twofold. Number one, anytime I accept somebody's friend request and they're in my DM within the next five minutes or less, I kind of know they're pitching me on something, right? Almost off the bat. I dislike it. I don't like it. So if I don't like it, why would I deploy that and do that to my prospects? So I look for things that I don't like in people's processes, things that are cringeworthy, things that deter me from wanting to reply to those conversations or even look at them right um and then you know i don't do that so that's number one number two by waiting 24 to 48 hours generally speaking because they just accepted your request they probably went and looked at your profile it's human nature they might see a couple of your content maybe if you're doing what i'm doing in the next 24 to 48 hours you're going to do a post a story a reel and they're going to con consume and see some of your content then when you do that outreach message it just hits harder plus it kind of plays into how i lead into my framework what i do the cold outreach which you might have picked up from that first little example i run through and i'm going to go through another example or two of that as well um, but there's an example of finding leads through somebody else's post so i'm talking about ways without even creating any posts um without creating your own groups per se how you can go out there and there's just opportunity just because this guy posted and all these people commented i guarantee everybody he replied to wasn't a good fit didn't enroll didn't book a call right um i might be able to offer them more value i might spend more time and i'm probably better in the messenger process because although it's dan replying this isn't dan replying most of the time it's dan setter logged into dan's account i know i can transition and add more value and do better in messenger than dan setter right i can also you know uh, for me look for more established people which usually have the follow logo on uh, next to them they probably or the check mark right those people are generally more established with larger audiences that i can hover over and see 43 mutual friends and if i'm looking to network with other experts and grow my audience and have on more guest interviewers here's some low-hanging fruit for me so there's another example. Let's go through another one or two of how to use other people's content, effort, money, groups, time. Um, let's look at, there's another welcome new members. Where's the ones where I put like competitor ads? Let's look at a couple of those. Our setters, that's definitely a competitor ad. Um, did I put more than one in there? So yeah, competitor ads, I put two posts. So let's go look at these really quick. So one of my companies, guys, um, as you may know, I run PDocs here, and also one of my companies is the sales lab. So I have setters setting for my sales team. So this is, you know, our setters, closers perform or you don't pay. Cole Gordon, some of you guys are familiar. Another person in the industry that spends a lot of money on paid traffic. This has 336 likes and 65 comments. So what I do is I go in and look at the comments again for people raising their hands saying, yeah, I want more information how I can become a remote setter, a remote closer. I have an exact training program. I have all the resources. My setters are trained on how to assess these conversations. So, and, and this is usually the, um, the appreh apprehension I hear about or hesitancy with, um, you know, 
commenting on comments from competitors' ads is number one, you don't represent that company. But the, the reason this works very well, um, generally speaking, is a majority of these people that spend money on paid ads, they expect that the people that engage are going to go click on the link and book a call or take the next step. We know, and you know, by seeing these ads and by running, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in my lifetime for our brands, a lot of people don't click and they just comment. And most business owners are very bad at hitting up the engagement on their on their ads. It's just something you'll notice. You'll see some business owners that do it. You'll see probably about 80% of people that aren't even commenting in the ad. So there's people down there raising their hands saying, yes, um, whatever, you know, Cole Gordon's company, right? Uh, I, I, I'm interested. They didn't click and nobody's replying to them. So I just chime in any one that raised their hand. Yes, I'm interested. More info. I'm a closer. Whatever they say down in the comments, I'm going to like their comment. I'm going to send a friend request and then I'm going to reply to their comment just simply, hey man, did anyone get back to you about this opportunity yet? And then they might say, no, no one did. Cool. You mind if I, I just shot you a friend request? Accept it. I'll shoot you a DM with some info. Or they'll come back saying, and this is the one I get. Well, Ray, I don't represent that company. How can I do that? Well, number one, for some reason, they didn't reply to the person. Number two, you're just really being an opportunist here. You're seeing somebody on, on an ad that has a problem or is looking for a solution that you also provide. They're raising their hand saying, yes, I'm interested, and nobody's replied to them. So when they might come back, hey, yeah, I'm interested. Do you work for XYZ company? Well, no, I don't, but I saw your comment. I thought it was weird that no one got back to you. I actually run a sales training and mentorship company and help people get placed in ideal offers as well. So I just thought I could show you, shoot you over some free information um, and at least maybe answer some of your questions. Is that cool? Right? People are going to respect that. Just be straightforward. You don't have to be shy. People, I've had people go, oh, crap, that's brilliant, Ray. I should actually do that with my competitors' ads. I never even thought about that. I'm like, yeah, man, you should. Like, These people are spending money to get your ideal audience here, and a lot of times they're not even following up with them or they're not reaching out to them, right? So there's another example. Um, maybe we'll go through one more. What else did I put in here? That's more of the framework. Uh, value posts, that's when we get down. Yeah, no, we can go through that. So like, uh, also... Yes, I create my own posts, right? And I create my own engagement. I do that both in my own groups, and we'll get to kind of the group method here momentarily, but also in other groups. So this is the Nothing Held Back group, a very high sophistication level, high value type of group. I don't just go in here with your random like, hey, what do you need to grow your business today? Like that post would if it even got accepted, which it probably wouldn't in this group, would get crap for engagement because people are looking for kind of good value in here, right? But Here's a post specifically, right, that I posted, and, and just right, right quick, I'll go through it. I see a lot of members in this group posting in here asking for feedback regarding their offers. After crafting 300-plus high-ticket offers for clients and students, as well as for ourselves, I can tell you right away that this is the first and perhaps most important exercise you, the business owner, should do. To build a good offer, no matter the price, you need to be able to identify and define these six things in one or two sentences tops before you go any further. So then I give them all the value of how they go about doing that, the six steps, right? Then I go on to say, tip number two, after you've done, done this, remember the four P's that going go into the offer next, how it's package, position, price, and the perceived value to the market. Hope that's helpful, man. You know, just so I'm not saying, hey, if you want me to do this for you, comment here. There's no hard call to action. I'm just dropping value with no expectation of return. You can see it got about 77 likes or 70 some odd likes, 27 comments. This led me to getting other people into my group. Um, this is so insane, brother. Thanks for the value. I watched that 43-minute review. So this guy reached out to me, and you'll see there's more replies down there. This guy reached out in the comments, um, basically, and I sent him over a full 45-minute training, PDOC's live stream, of me going through this exact process of my offer crafting and my offer creation expertise. If you guys want to see that or my offer building workshop, comment down below. Let me know. That's not what today's call's about, but I have some great resources on it. Um, as you have worked with hundreds of clients, what funnel building tools do you use in software and yada? Yada, yada yada so i chimed in and kept the conversation going right um this one had 12 replies you know complete fire then i ended up in dms and and you know um i think this guy booked a sales call with me but you know uh, thanks my man if it ain't fire what's the point of posting it like that's what i said when he said complete fire right so like i leverage the engagement that i get on my posts um the last one i'm going to show you here in a minute is how to leverage 
other groups by other people posting again not necessarily posting on their timeline being a big influencer like some of the ones i brought up or not on their paid ads or not even on their welcome post but one more avenue that i use um but sometimes it's creating my own content right and i'm going to go back and forth then he said so true i'm in the same space as you mentioned above can i care if i send you a dm so this guy's already reaching out to me sure man go for it awesome then we talked in the dms i think i booked him and then i said you know to people that day that i posted this um, I think I was doing a live stream, yeah, it looks like later that afternoon where I was going this over this in real time. So people are like, yeah, I would like to attend it, right? Yes, I'd like the replay. Cool, here's the replay, right? That's probably where this other guy came down and clicked on the link and said he watched my 43-minute thing. Maybe I didn't send it to him. This guy, Jermaine, uh, ended up on my sales calls. I think he joined one of my programs, if I'm not mistaken, um, and had a lot of engagement with him. So again, went in here, dropped value with no expectation of return. So um and let me cover one more here really quickly. Um, this is somebody that I actually spoke to and I just did the other day. So I want to show you like even recent ones. Um, I didn't really think about like using this as an example, but it just kind of worked out that way. So I'll show you guys real quick. Um, I think this is somebody that actually asked to um, come into the group here. And uh, I think he's new to the group, but he actually asked to watch this. So I'll check back. John, uh, I'm going to bring up your post the other day. And if you're watching, just comment below. Um, but this is just another example, right? So I go into a group and I see somebody, in this case, John, you know, people do outreach in their business. What are your op opinions on voice note and video messages when working with direct uh, DMs, right? So like in my mind, I already had the, the curriculum plan for this week's live stream. Um, plus, this is what I do, right? So my comment, and let's just click all comments so I can just show you guys what's happening here. My comment, I just said something very simple, right? I just, where to go? All comments, why is it not loading? Oh, view more comments. For some reason, it's different. It's so much easier to do this stuff on your phone, which is normally where I'm doing it from. So the screen sharing, sorry if it takes a little longer to get to the same spot. I should have maybe just showed most relevant. It would have brought mine up. There it is. Okay, sorry, I scrolled right by it. So again, he, you know, you guys saw what he said. Very simply back, I just said, hey, I do cold outreach on Facebook quite well. And a voice note is always my first message. John came back saying, nice, if you don't mind me asking, what do you talk about in those voice notes? So this is the perfect segue because we're just going into step two. Uh, in a nutshell, then, right? I talk slash keep it almost entirely about the prospect. Um, and then I told him I'm actually hosting a free training on this. Uh, when I messaged him, it was actually within 24 hours. But either way, I said in just under 48 hours, let me know if you'd like to check it out. Okay, sure, please do. I'll shoot you a DM with the link um, or check this post for the details. Um, so I'll, I'll show you some examples and hopefully I can get to some of the messenger conversations and have time here before I have to end this. I want to show you guys some examples of those as well. Um, you know, messenger conversations that, that segue off of posts, not necessarily the cold DMs, which I'm about to cover. Um, but yeah, that's just another example. So now John is in my group. Uh, he may be attending this and hopefully he's getting some value, right? Um, and hopefully, you know, he's going to learn something because he asked about DMs and that's what we're going to go into right now, guys. So let me go back to the other screen real quick. And then, you know, uh, I personally always start with a voice note, basically with this exact framework. So I'll bring one up and do one here in real time as an example. Um, but this is basically my framework. Uh, hey, Bob, right? Nice to make your acquaintance, man. Hey, my name's Ray, and I'm reaching out because it appears we became connected here on Facebook in the last couple of days. And rather than remain strangers, I like to actually connect with each person, you know, and get to know them and build a connection and engage with them. It seems like a lot of people right, remain strangers or whatever I said there. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I'm always just looking to expand my network. And you know what, um, Bob, I'm not always sure how the Facebook algorithm works, but what I've noticed is they generally do a pretty good job of suggesting or recommending other people who are like-minded in terms of being entrepreneurial based, being creative, being critical thinkers, right? So it looks like you kind of tick some of them boxes by looking over your profile. And also, um, you know, looking at your cover photo, it says that you run a Facebook ad agency. I'm kind of curious, man, how long you've been doing that and uh, how many clients you currently working with look forward to talking soon there bob and uh hearing back from you as well as looking forward to seeing some of your content moving forward my friend chat soon boom you know end it so um what i also do simultaneously while i'm doing this and you guys i have other recording trainings just so i can get through everything and maybe i'll circle back to it um i'll either you know play a couple of one or two of those examples i can send them to people if we don't have time examples of my dms and the replies that i get from people what i always like to say by by this approach is number one um by using a voice note, even with the same exact text, which this text, if you just did it in text, would work fine as well. But a voice note, 
people can hear your passion, your voice inflections, um, if you're mixing in humor. Nothing could be misinterpreted as stuff can be in text. Number two, what I've noticed is about a 16% higher open rate when I do a voice note as opposed to the same message in SMS. More importantly, I notice a better morale. When the person comes back, it's usually with a voice note to me, but it can also be with a text. And they're saying something along the lines of, hey, Ray, that's awesome, man. Nobody ever reaches out and, and talks like that. People usually DM me asking if, you know, um, I need more appointments or if I want their new VA in my business. And they're usually just pitching me BS. So I think this is you know, a refreshing approach. And yeah, a little more about me. You're right. I do run a Facebook ad agency, yada, yada, yada. And Ray, man, as I, I'm just kind of curious, um, you know, now that I told you all about me, I looked over your profile real quick. It looks like you own a couple different digital brands. I'd love to hear a bit more about what you do, right? So people always ask me, how do I make that segue or transition? Well, human nature is by, by keeping that first message all about the prospect and barely talking Talking about yourself all I'm talking about myself in there is to kind of dispel or you know relieve ap any apprehension about why I reached out to this person hey man I'm always just looking to expand my network and connect with other like-minded individuals you seem to tick some of them boxes then back to all about them right I barely talk about myself it's just really to introduce my name and say why I've reached out to dispel that so I can get into the meat and the potatoes of my message but I, like I said by keeping it all about them human nature is they come back asking about you so you don't have that kind of awkward segue Way, which a lot of people get in cold DMs when they try to reach out like I'm showing you here relational. So it's too many of you people are using Facebook as more B2B and you're trying to reach out with your offer right off the bat. There's a few problems with that. Number one is somebody has to at least kind of like you and and have a little bit of rapport with you before they're ever going to really listen to your offer seriously. They might read it, but they're probably dismissing it because you haven't built up any rapport or likability yet. So that's number one. Number two, I hate when people pitch an offer or a solution without even really knowing if I have that problem. For instance, hey, Ray, what if I can get you an extra 15 calendar appointments booked um, this month or you don't pay? Well, what this person doesn't know is we're booking 17 to 20 appointments per day right now. 15 a month does nothing for me. So they came out with a message that I book more than that each day. How does getting me 15 a month, like they think this message offers me value. They don't even know if that's going to help me. So that's another aspect. And I could go on with the, with the, you know, with the endless BS pitches I've seen and, and organic outreach messages. Now, another thing to think about yourself is when you're looking to refine or craft your outreach message is which ones work for you. Think about which people ever reached out to you where, where you were happy to respond, where you engaged, where you ultimately maybe you know took a, a, a link from them to watch a master class or booked a call with them. What did they do? Because that's another way I frame my outreach. The things that I see that are cringeworthy or that I hate, I make sure, number one, I don't do and teach. Number two, I kind of do the exact opposite. Like, I hate that. I'm going to do it this way. But in addition, you know, I'm also um, finding things that I like. Like, somebody does a good outreach message. I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool. I might teach that to some people. I might implement that and try and test it. I always test things and make sure I get results before I teach them. Um, but good ethical messaging happens so few and far between that when it does, I like to take advantage, which kind of leads into the other aspect of this. Now, let's say we weren't doing cold DMs, but we were getting hit with cold DMs, which probably happens to all of us. Like I said, Facebook, in my estimation, is a much more relational platform. So I don't use it as much as a B2B. Use LinkedIn if you want to start with right away with your offer. You still got to do it better than I'm saying, but there's ways you can do it. Use cold email, but Facebook, there's got to be a little likability. Anybody that's ever really bought my high ticket products over the years and so many different offers has related with me on some of my personal content, whether it's me taking my daughter somewhere, whether it's me coaching a softball team, whether it's on a camping trip, whether it's you know a cool classic car. Like they relate to something about me as well as my expertise. It's usually not just that so you want to be able to have them relate to you your brand the brand you're representing um, what you guys stand for you know as as well as that other aspect of it but what I was saying when I get cold DM'd I use a process and if I get to it I actually have, have an example listed here of what I call flip the script when somebody DMs me like that sometimes I ignore them but if I'm in a playful mood or I want to flip the script and I'm in a process of booking people I basically they you know they send me that first message and the first thing back is Hey, how does this, is this actually working for you? Well, what do you mean? Like, how many of these are you sending per day? And are people actually, are you getting calls booked on this? Are people interested? Well, it's a little frustrating. I send 50 or 100 of these a day, and I might get, like, three positive replies. Man, that's rough. Like, that must be frustrating. Do you know there's a better way you, do, you, do, you could do outreach with a fraction of the, you know, number of outreach and actually more replies? 
what what do you mean how right and now now i've just taken the lead in that conversation and i end up getting them into my facebook group my free training my dm center academy program whatever wherever that works out right um uh, but i like i flip the script on bad messaging all the time and just show them that there's a better way and i have uh numerous examples about that so um, let me stop real quick. Like I said, let me see if people are watching live. And uh, I know I didn't say this since the top, but if you guys have anything I'm going over, resources you want that I might have mentioned, drop it in the comments here. Um, questions you have, you know, things you um, I didn't clarify or maybe I covered, you know, too fast, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also anybody that expressed interest that may not be watching, I will be sending over the replay as well. So let me go into the PDOCS group right now. There's a live stream. Oh, yeah, there's a, a good amount of comments there. Let me just check them real quick. Voice notes much more personal. Rebecca, awesome, awesome. Um, Sharon agreeing. Is it not showing me all the comments because it's got to catch up in real time? Absolutely leading with you. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, these are great points. These are great points. I don't see any questions, so I'll just leave it up because some of these I see are coming in in, like, real time because I wasn't watching live. It's probably catching up with the comments, um, but I will get back to that momentarily. Um, so, yeah, I want to get into some examples. The last thing I'm going to cover is the Facebook group funnel and monetization. So, number one is having a good membership question strategy. So, I'll run through ours really, really quickly for anybody that's not familiar with this. Let me go into the PDOCS group. Thank you for all the positive comments there, Rebecca. Your great, super valuable stuff. That's what I like to hear. If I'm not dropping value, most specifically, something can take some something somebody can actually take away and go implement. I kind of feel like I'm not doing a great job. So membership questions. Now, this is how I set these up, right? I set these up to turn into a booking funnel. So number one is when you have a Facebook group, you can't just go into your group and click invite people. Um, if you do, that already circumvents your membership questions, which is killing the lead gen aspect. Maybe when you're first starting a group to get your first 50 or 100 members, yeah, I could totally get that. Just asking people to join, um, getting some people in there. But once you're using it primarily to lead gen and you have some content and some existing members, again, just 50 to 100, move over to this mode when you're turning it into like a booking funnel. So step one for us, however this works for you, is always to figure out how established or advanced they are and to kind of label them beginner and, you know, beginner entry level, you know, intermediate novice, and then, you know, uh, expert skill or, you know, scale mode, whatever that is. So that's what we do here. Um, every week we have very in-depth trainings where we focus on implementation. Um, where are you in your journal? So we can send you the best free guide relevant to where you're at. Like I'm under 5K starting out, which for us sending you a resource would be something much different than I would send to the next guy or the next guy. So it also helps me send out a resource and an asset that's really going to offer value to this person. And I know that by just looking over their entry questions, right? Five to 10K, I want to go beyond. This person probably is at a point where they have at least a little money to invest. I can probably get some quick wins for them in their business. And I have a great tutorial for that. 20K and looking to scale hard, probably going more toward organic scale mode, building out your organic team or going into paid mode or a combination. I, I would show them a couple different models but also have outreach very specific to the membership question that they answer so number one i'm kind of saying okay this guy's more entry level this guy's more uh, intermediate this guy's more advanced right step two we always use as a capture so whatever you blast most relevant us our email list so we capture email maybe you do sms campaigns maybe you want to capture a linkedin profile because you're going over there whatever your next best avenue that you're going to hit these people with possibly newsletters content offer reminders whatever value emails um messages what piece of info do you want to gather do a swap hey man what's your best email so we can send you the free guide that's mentioned above right you, you said you're you're at 5k we want to send you this right we can add you to the live stream invites replays bonus resources etc step three this is what we call our yes question our yes post where we get someone to raise their hand this one shows intent right that's what we want with our other question i like to call it a yes post um where it's it's a very clear yes or no right so hey here at PDOX, we've generated 100 plus millions for our clients. Um, we did about 1.6 in 12 months teaching the PDOX method. Would you like to, would you be interested in fast tracking your own implementation so you can scale your business as quickly as possible? When they say yes, that leads me back into, let's go back to the document real quick, back into um, number C, which is the new member tag at welcome yes posts. So I have a specific post, you'll see it here in this group. Um, 
Um, it's a video where you'll see about 25 people. Every time we get a new member that raises their hand to the yes post, they get tagged in there and then they get a very specific DM uh, outreach message. Now, I actually do a DM outreach message for all my new members. The approach to the yes post is a little different than someone who didn't say yes. Somebody who didn't say yes, I'm more finding out what that best free resource is, making sure I got their email, making sure they received it, just doing an introduction, whatever. This person, I'm going to be much more um, direct with. Hey, man, you commented in the group and, and what I do, this is what I do. So, so, um, number one, I set up the membership strategy to be a requirement for them to enter the group. And now the way you invite them is you just send them the share link to your group. You don't actually go in your group and click invite new member. When somebody's interested, cool, man, here's a link to my group. Now, when they click that, they have to go through your membership question. So this is what happens. Um, first, I go over accepting new members. There's some I don't accept. Um, some people I know are just coming in to, to lead gen in my group. Some that are in 1,864 other groups, they're not going to get value out of my group. They're not spending any time here. So I have a few things. You guys can all be, you know, use your own discernment on who you accept if you want to just get everybody in right off the bat, right? But I would always build, and still my PDOX group's a few years old. We only have 3,000 members because I don't just let everybody in. I just let in people that I think are going to get value things people people that are going to add value people that are going to actually consume and implement the you know strategies and the trainings that i drop um once we accept them this is my strategy so when i bring it up and i see new members coming in number one i see their name i click on it, it takes me right to their profile before i ever accept them mind you i shoot a friend request number two i screenshot their answers to the membership question number three i hit approve to group then once they accept my friend request this one being a little warm you don't have to wait a day or two you can do it pretty much immediately once they accept my friend request i shoot them a dm Hey, Bob, thanks for joining our PDOX group. We're stoked to have you here in the community. Hopefully you saw the welcome post I tagged you in and you see our free course and our free live streams that we do. In addition, man, you raised your hand yes that you wanted to fast track your results and scale faster. Is that accurate? And just put it back on him. Yes, right. I want to scale. Cool. So let me ask you a couple questions. Then it can dive right into assessing where he's at with no friction, very streamlined, right? So that's kind of this process, um, you know, set up your membership questions strategically to find out, you know, how established they are to capture information and to get them to show intent. Yes, I want to move forward faster, right? Um, then go through your accepting, set this up for your own company with, with like how you want your team or if you're doing this personally, what are your restrictions for who you're going to accept? Me, I probably accept about 60% of members I see come in and I think I'm really, really strict. I think most groups probably accept 80 to some. I know accept everybody, right? But like, I think most groups probably accept about 80% of the members. Um, but again, you set that up however you want. Once you know you're going to accept them, before you click accept, make sure you click on their profile, you shoot them a friend request. That way you guys are also connected outside the group and they can see the content on your feed and your stories and your reels in addition to your group, right? Sometimes that's what it takes. Um, a lot of you guys have heard me tell stories about people who have booked sales calls who have been bought in to my expertise totally. Then they saw a post about me coaching my daughter's softball team and they shot me a DM. Hey, Ray, I think I'd like to book a call and talk again. Saw you with your daughter the other night. I also coach a team. That really hits with me. I think I want to maybe entertain talking about your program. Then I closed him into a 6K deal. Before he saw that, he only knew about my expertise and didn't really relate to me. Wasn't quite ready to buy. So that's what I'm talking about with making your content be able to relate. And this, this session isn't too much about content per se. Uh, content creation. It's more about I'm showing you ways to use either assets you already have, maybe a Facebook group, how to build one properly if you're going to, how to use other people's content, ads, groups, engagement, um, other people's DMs to you, um, how to start your own cold conversations, all that stuff without really having to create or publish a lot. Now that goes great in conjunction with all these strategies and I highly recommend it. Not required, but um, but as we do other avenues of you know growing our network publishing content it's just going to expedite that process and uh and just kind of you know um just kind of go 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 hand in hand right um so we're closing a few contracts this week you'll be hearing more awesome awesome i've been waiting that's the best message i've read here guys that's awesome rebecca hopefully you're still on and listening um jp we use voicemails and they're crazy effective excellent excellent i'm hoping and i think you you learned that from me and i, I sent you some examples jp uh, maybe you were doing that prior to you know engaging with me i'm glad to hear you're using it regardless though 
um, that's something I say often. Not a lot of people do this, and even less are teaching it, right? This is very effective. I work with DM setters. I have some crazy screenshots from our DM setter thread today of them all being so stoked to work with me and see this expertise. A couple just this week coming in and getting onboarded because they're seeing this refreshing approach. And one of them said in today's screenshot, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't have it in front of me um, in today's conversation. Yeah, like organic outreach used to be cringe and grimy to me. And cringe was definitely the word she used in this one. And learning from you, this is already refreshing. She smiled. She's like, I'm so excited about this offer and opportunity. This is the best training I've seen. Like, this is how you do it right, right? So, like, always hearing that is is so, so valuable to me to, to let people know that there's another way. Because most people, when I start talking about DM setting, they just kind of roll their eyes and like, that sucks. I've done that before. It probably did suck. I, I totally... <laughs> I totally feel for you. It sucks the way 80 plus percent of the market is teaching it. What if I showed you a way that didn't feel grimy, a way that was within your personality, a way that wasn't scripted and robotic, and a way where you're not reaching out and pitching right off the bat? Would you be open to learning that? Oh, what do you mean, right? Like, that's contradictory of everything that I do. Exactly. Would you like to learn the other way? Or are you just totally done with this? Are you at least open to a more ethical, more solution-based appointment setting method? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to learn, you know, and people, just, they just kind of get blown away when they see, like, you can do this without, you know, without having to, uh, without having to just annoy people, without having to be pitchy, without having to be spammy, right? So, last thing I want to do real quick, guys, I'm going to go through one or two messenger examples. Oh, it's got that stupid encryption thing again, right? Make sure I can actually open and see all my chats. So I'm going to I'm going to open here one or two examples of, you know, follow ups with people that I've talked to. So you can see some messages, uh, a couple examples that I jotted down, uh, whatever uh, access here. Yes, please. So let me just bring up like one I talked about is flipping the script on somebody that reached out to me. So it was this one. I can still remember. I don't remember how recent it was. But yeah, I'm going to try to bring up a couple uh, relevant conversations here again earlier. And if you guys weren't on, I'm happy to send the replay if, if some of you guys jumped on late. But earlier, I went over other Facebook group strategies and screen shared the groups I use and the type of posts I look for. Um, I shared competitor ad strategies, competitor organic strategies, how to use that. So if you guys jumped on late, that was all on here. Uh, just let me know. Happy to send you the recording. Um, but now I want to so. Of course, this is the first message from from the um, from this person. Hey, Raymond, hope you're doing well. Do you need more sales meetings with your ideal clients this month? Like, I'm already rolling my eyes thinking cringe right off the bat, right? And then I ignore it. Um, that was 4.11, so she waits two months for her follow-up, which is really weird for an appointment setter. Hey, Raymond, I just want to reach out because I specialize in lead generation. We have a proven track record. Hello, Raymond, like after enough time. And then my first message, as I talked about, guys, is the script and approach you teach to students to book 80, is this the script and approach you teach to, to you know, students and clients to book 80 sales calls? Appreciate you reaching out. We offer performance-based compensation. Sounds good, right? Totally skip my question. So that's another thing. Listen to your prospects in the questions. This appointment center is just trying to go right into, this is what we do. Does this sound good? You want to book? Like, if you book this person, they're probably never going to show, and they're likely not a good fit, because you haven't done the legwork to assess where they're at. To actually offer value and suggestions and recommendations, and not, this is what we do, sound good, book a call. Like, that's not what I do with people. I do recommend a call at some point. It's usually 15 minutes. And it's usually for me to give them, first I assess what tutorial or resource I can send them of value. Then I say, if you want to see how we can build this custom into your business, as opposed to the general, you know, whatever niche I just sent you or the, the tutorial, and you want to see how we can customize this to your offer, your business, your niche, what have you, book a free 15 minute call, happy to brainstorm and show you how I would do this for your business, right? So that's my value add when it's booking a call. It's not to get on to hear about my services, it's to get on to see how I can give you some next steps of, hey, if I were you right now, I'd do one, two, three. That'd be my focus, right? When this person might've been doing four, seven, nine, right? That on the list of what's gonna really get him results, right? Um, and then I'm like, is this the script? So now she replies after I say you didn't answer my question. Yes, we have effective strategy for for it. Again, that's not what I asked. Like, is this the script that you book 80? I know it's not. It's horrible. It, it's awful. I was like, yes, we have effective strategy for it. Well, it's not too effective right now. If you think this is an effective approach business owners need, you've likely never learned effective, efficient outreach. Best of luck going forward, right? She just dropped off there, which is fine. She probably doesn't want to learn the right way. She's, she's fine. Whatever, right? She might have already given up by now. Who, who knows? Um, a lot of these people will be like, you know, and I was I was a little condescending with her. Um, but again, best of luck going forward. So a lot of times people will say, what like if you think this is efficient 
And normally, again, I'm a little more polite. Well, there isn't a, a more efficient, effective approach. Would you like to hear about how that works? This lady, I just didn't get a good vibe from. I didn't even want to go much farther, but you guys get my point. Um, there was another one I did recently with the flipping the script. It was Mason. Unfortunately, let me see. Yeah, it was this guy. This guy actually seemed like legit about wanting to get better. So I sent him examples. I sent him information. He, he even said things back to me like, oh my God, this is going to make my, my job so much easier. But this guy led, I'm not sure why it's not loading. This guy led with a video outreach note. Problem with it was it was it was mass. It wasn't custom. So I'm not saying these are bad. These are very similar to the voice note. Video might work even better if you're doing them all custom, right? And then he came back with a little message because I didn't reply. Hey, man, just wanted to see if you saw my thing above. I replied. I was like, hey, man, so these are voice notes. I can't really... That's why I showed you the Patricia one first, because I knew I typed that voice notes. I can't show you as much. But I was like, hey, man, like, yes, you know, I saw your message. You see my thing next to it. Like, you know, when I saw it, I didn't reply because it seemed very vague. And you were sending that out to a bunch of people. Didn't offer me much value. I was like, and then I went into like, oh, there's a better way. He's like, well, you know, he comes back asking me to learn. I was like, above is an example of my approach. If you'd like to hear some of the replies I receive in return, happy to share. So I showed him two of my voice notes that I send to prospects and how I customize them. And then he come back saying, oh, my God, that's awesome, right? I gave him the little, like, uh, like he said something nice to me. I was like, always first try. Yeah, he asked it if this is scripted or if I do this off the cuff the first try, right? I'm like, always first try, no script, just a framework in my head. It's also on paper. You guys see it on the document. I'm going to send it over to anybody that wanted um, here today, the three steps I went over. But here's a couple of sample replies. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So these are replies I get from prospects that send me messages back, right? And uh, they're, you know, hey, Raymond, this is so refreshing. This guy went and gave me almost a three minute like life story. It gave me so much context and information to dive in and say, hey, man, this is what will help you best, right? So um, this kid actually looked seemed like he was willing to get better, realized, like he even said, man, I did that custom because I'm traveling, right? I'm sorry, generic um, mass because I'm traveling right now. I normally do them custom. I should have known better. So he took accountability, said he wanted to get better. I was happy to share with him. Big difference, you know, in how people do it. But another person um, I could probably hit back up and reach back out to. There's been about a month plus since I've talked to him and see how he's done, follow up with him and uh, probably enroll him into my DM Center Academy or a program like that if I wanted to. So, um, yeah, so those are some other examples. Let's show one or two that I actually got to like book calls and lead gen. And then I'm already going a little over, guys, so I'll wrap it up with like one or two more. Let's see this guy. I know this guy I talked to him a week or two ago, and I got him booked into, which, Derek, what was the last name? I think it was this guy. Yeah, it looks like I had a friend. I could have swore I was already connected with this guy. It's weird. I'm pretty sure I already have it. Sorry, guys. Let me just double check. Am I mistaken about the guy? Let's see. No, oh, see, there's our messenger thread. So hopefully you guys can see this. I think you can. I should be sharing everything. I'll run through this one really quickly. This just took place here in September. I should have kept it open in full messenger. It always takes longer to load in here. Okay, so last day of August, hey. So he went through one of my trainings, and he's like, hey, I went through this YouTube training about our data as a service program and one of my other companies called Audience Lab Guys. And uh, and it, basically, he's like, I wanted to get started, and this doc has all the information. Wondering if I could send it to you. I'm like, yes, unfortunately, that's a client document only. Happy to set up a brief chat and run you through it myself, though, if you'd like. Right, and that is a client. I'm not blowing smoke up his butt. People pay thousands of dollars to join that program. I don't feel right to my existing clients if I send that out to people for free, and I stick to my word. Um, that'd be cool if you have time next week. I've already talked with a couple. So now what I didn't know is he's already met with members on our team, basically just trying to figure out the best fulfillment models. Well, that's my jam area of expertise 100%. I'll be back in town on Tuesday. Hit me up and we'll set something up. So before Tuesday, he's already hitting me up. Hey, Raymond, do you have a calendar link so I could book a time with you? Which is always great, right? I like to talk about like kind of leaving breadcrumb trails in these conversations, leaving a little bit and telling them, hey, man, I'll come back to you on this day or you come back to me or go through this resource. Let me know your biggest takeaway. Once I know they've done something, then I'm willing to give them a little of my time. That's also how we gauge intent and get the right prospects that show up to calls, right? But hey, do you have a link? Yeah, sure. You can use this link to book. Boom. Already scheduled with you like almost immediately, right? I said that at 510. By 525, he'd sent me back saying he was booked. And then um, I came back from vacation the next day on Tuesday. I saw we had a new resource that our team created. So I sent it over to him for more authority and information prior to the call. Thank you. Check it out. 
we had our call. Hey, Ray, thanks so much for the call today. Really, really appreciate your time. And this guy came back with, at the end of the call, I still remember it. Hey, Ray, I'm actually looking at a couple options. I'm, I'm pretty positive after speaking to you today and now understanding the business models. This is the way I want to go, but I at least want to look at my other options. And how I handle that on a sales call is, dude, you'd be an idiot if you just looked at one option and signed up for your new business model or partner. Please go on and look at the other options. Let me know your thoughts. Get back to me after you've had that call and uh, happy to move forward or, you know, part as friends, right? So that's what I told him. That's what I always encourage people to do because I know for what we're doing here, my sales team, my process, my product, it's going to stand out. They're going to go see the competition. They're going to come back saying, hey, Ray, I think Audience Lab and Data as a Service is the next right move for me. I'll be out of town next week for a work trip, but I'm ready to go on the 16th, which is now already passed, and this guy's enrolled, right? Um, I've got tons of potential. Now his brain's spinning, right? Verticals, niches. Not sure if you handle the onboarding or someone else. Then I told him, I'll connect you with my senior advisor. Next steps, right? I'm replying to his next steps question, which is always important in these conversations. I'll connect you with my senior advisor when you're ready to get started. Finalize the agreement terms. Collect payment, send over your onboarding package. Um, not sure about your onboarding call. Multiple different calls. First call with a platform audience and support specialist. Second call with me to go through some of the things he and I had already talked about. Then he actually says, um, awesome, can I get the first call set up for the 16th? I'll make arrangements in the morning. Perfect, thank you, Ray. I wake up the next morning to make arrangements, and he goes, actually, can we schedule that call for the 12th, not the 16th? I made sure I share some things around, and I think I can move forward even faster. Please let me know. Sure, so just to verify, you'd like to call and to get enrolled on the 12th, yes? Yes, I would. Cool, shoot me over your best email and some open times you have on the 12th, and I'll get it set up. Boom, 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 yada, yada, yada. So again, very direct. This guy found me because he stumbled us a training or a post or something I dropped of value. Again, I do it in multiple channels. Doesn't matter that he saw my YouTube video. Same thing as, as the post I went through earlier here today, guys, um, that I dropped with offer creation in the Nothing Help group. Dropped something of value, people raised their hand, attended my trainings, booked calls, etc. Um, the more avenues and the more we can expand and do this, sure, we're probably going to have you know more results and more people trickling in. But it just show you how you can handle the conversation. I, do, I wasn't salesy. I wasn't pitchy. I wasn't desperate to book him or desperate for a sale. I just held the conversation like a person, talked to him like he's a buddy on the couch across from me, and offered him the recommendations or solutions I would offer to a buddy sitting across the couch. Like, people can feel that stuff. So... Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the the crux of what I got to cover. Um, hopefully, I went through. Um, I never go through everything I want to in terms of examples because I could go on and I have so many. But I tried to cover the ones that were the most valuable, most relevant, and um, you know most prevalent in these particular three aspects of the strategy that we're talking about today. So again, if you want this document, and I'll add some more links to examples in there. Um, I didn't do that before this because I just had them all saved in a little Slack thread, but I'll give you some of the examples. Um, I'll put them under number one of where I went into groups to lead gen their uh, welcome posts, their paid ads, their um, their organic posts, you know, a couple of those examples I went through. The cold DM framework, happy to send you guys if somebody's watching and didn't get the gist of it by, you know, this whole presentation, happy to send you some examples like I did that Mason there and you can listen to some of the ones I've done and some of the responses just you know drop a comment or DM me if you want them um, or if you want me to send over the document and uh, 55 minute session today non-stop hopefully you guys got some value sounds like by the comments you did which I'm gonna check one more time here really quickly I don't know if it's gonna give me the up-to-date thing or if it's gonna make me catch up again but let me just see one more time so I do definitely see more comments are in there see one more time if there's any questions and it lets me Hey, Mark, I see you on the live stream, or we're on the live stream. Thanks for tuning in. Mark's been working with us and consuming, and I started working with Mark. What's it been, Mark? Like three years ago, maybe, now that we connected? Two and a half, at least. Um, one of the hardest working and one of the most diligent reps uh, I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Uh, nice to see you on here, buddy. Hashtag replay. Always love a good replay. Cool, cool. I'll send over that stuff. Um, yeah, guys, I'll get with the comments later. It's just not catching up on my phone right now um, because when I'm logging into this, it's going back to the beginning of the live stream. So thanks for everybody who participated. Um, after I upload it on YouTube, guys, like the video, please comment below for any of the assets, and I'll try to drop as much of this stuff below in the description for you. Have a good day, everyone.